Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm so excited. Our spiral rain box came today for July. And I am going to read the first couple pages real quick. Feel free to fast forward if you're not interested in this part. So look at this gorgeous image that we've got here. And we have a quote at the bottom by Sandra Ingerman. The path of the shaman is a journey of transformation where the spirit animals are our guides teaching us to walk in harmony with the earth and the stars. And here is the image on the other side. When you connect with your spirit animal, you awaken to the sacred dance of life, guided by the timeless wisdom of nature's guardians. And that is a shamanic proverb. So this box is about shamanism and also spirit animals heads up because I just heard them Dexter is here so there may possibly be barking in this video I'm so sorry but he's here for the rest of the night and I didn't want to wait till tomorrow <laughs> after work tomorrow to open my box all right in the whispers of the wind and the rustle of the leaves the spirit animals call us to the journey within, revealing the wisdom of the ancient and the strength of our soul. Affirmation for the month of July. I am attuned to the whispers of the natural world, allowing the spirit animals to teach me the ancient wisdom and connect me with the sacred essence of life. As July spreads its warm embrace under the summer sun, it beckons us to embark on a mystical journey into the realm of shamanic wisdom and spirit animals. This month, serving as a bridge between the peak of summer and the whisper of autumn, invites us to delve deeply into the sacred connections we share with the natural world and its spiritual inhabitants. July's long Sunlight days pulse with the energy of life in full bloom, calling us to awaken to the presence of our spirit animals and the shamanic guides that traverse the unseen realms. The air thick with the hum of cicadas and the scent of wildflowers carries the ancient rhythms and teachings of the earth, encouraging us to tune in and listen to the whispers of the wild. In this time of profound connection, the spirit animals draw near, their energies palpable in the rustling leaves and the flowing streams. July invites us to honor these sacred guides through rituals and journeys that bridge the physical and spiritual worlds, allowing us to harness their wisdom and strength. It is a period for seeking visions, for dancing to the heartbeat of the earth, and for embracing the transformative power of shamanic practices. The warmth of July encourages us to open our hearts and spirits to the teachings of the natural world, engaging in ceremonies that align us with the energies of our spirit animals. It is a time for journeying into the inner landscapes of our souls, for storytelling under the full moon, and for renewing our bonds with the earth and its myriad inhabitants. By celebrating the month of shamanic journeys and spirit animals, we not only honor the ancient traditions of the shamanic path, but also affirm our role as custodians of this sacred knowledge. July with its vibrant dance of light and shadow offers a profound space for us to explore and deepen our understanding of the spiritual connections that guide and protect us. Let this month of, of mystical exploration and animal wisdom inspire us to embrace the shamanic path with reverence and gratitude, weaving the teachings of our spirit animals into the fabric of our daily lives. As we journey through this sacred time, let us remember that in honoring the spirit guides that walk beside us, we nurture the connection to the earth and its sacred rhythms, ensuring that their wisdom flows through us, vibrant and alive, into the future. July named after 
sorry, July's sacred journey, embracing shamanic wisdom and spirit animals. July, named after Julius Caesar, stands as a powerful month of spiritual exploration in connection with the natural world. As we bask in the full bloom of summer, this month invites us to embark on shamanic journeys guided by the wisdom of spirit animals that have walked with us since time immemorial. This is a period where the vibrancy of life reaches its zenith, providing a fertile ground for profound spiritual growth and discovery. In many cultures, July is a time of honoring this sacred bond between humans and the animal kingdom. The long sun-drenched days and warm mystical nights open portals to the spirit world, allowing us to commune with our animal guides and learn from their ancient wisdom. The energy of July is not merely a celebration of summer's fullness, but a testament to the transformative power of shamanic practices and the guidance of our spirit animals. The essence of July is enriched by spirit rituals of connection and transformation whether through guided meditations shamanic drumming or the creation of sacred spaces each act serves as a bridge to the spiritual realm where our spirit animals await to offer their wisdom and protection these practices provide not just a link to the unseen world but a foundation of our spiritual journey and personal growth July's traditions are deeply intertwined with the rhythms of nature, reflecting the harmony between the earthly and the spiritual. This month encourages us to celebrate the height of summer, a pivotal time when the veil between worlds is thin, enhancing our ability to connect with the spiritual forces that guide us. It is a time for reflection, for seeking visions, and for embracing the guidance of the spirit animals that walk beside us. Furthermore, July is a month of empowerment and transformation, drawing on the dynamic energy of summer and invites us to seek the wisdom of our spirit guides, to harness the strength of our animal allies, and to engage in practices that foster personal and spiritual growth. Through these connections, we fortify our spirits and align ourselves with the ancient rhythms of the earth. As we step into the vibrant embrace of July, let us draw upon the rich tapestry of shamanic wisdom and the guidance of spirit animals. Let this month be a celebration of the sacred journey, a time for deepening our connection to this natural world and an opportunity to transform our spirits with the enduring power of our animal guides. Let's let July's sacred energy guide us through its sunlit days and starry nights, deepening our connection to the mystical paths of our spiritual journey. Awesome. Cannot wait to see what we got. Let's dig in. We have our papers, which I'm just going to set aside without looking. Just ripping into the tissue paper it was taped closed so norm as normal i'm gonna start with all the pouches of herbs and stuffs we have cedar which is good for purification spiritual protection grounding enhances inner strength aids spiritual healing creates energy barriers bolsters confidence and stability Supports grounding rituals. It's also antifungal, anti-inflammatory, respiratory aid, relieves cold systems, symptoms, improves circulation, and soothes skin irritations. Oh, cool. So last time we got cedar, uh, I think it was cedar powder right i think it was cedar for the incense cones if i remember correctly but this time it's uh pieces so that's cool we have a different form of it oh leave it to me to spill it everywhere it smells good Right. 
This is Mugwort Psychic Protection Clairvoyance Lucid Dreaming Facilitation. Spiritual purification stimulates astral travel, enhances divination abilities, protection during rituals, awakens psychic powers, is antispasmatic, relieves painful mis menstruations, aids digestion, nerve tonic, improves sleep, and antifungal properties. And that's what that looks like. Got a decent amount of both of those. Oh, oh, we got some charcoal discs. Three of them. Oh, I see a bunch of sage. White sage. Purification, spiritual protection, banishing oops, negative energies. Sorry, banishing negative energies. Sanctifying spaces, aids purification rituals, strengthens energy barriers, promotes wisdom and mental clarity, supports meditative practices, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, improves respiratory health, aids digestion, soothes skin irritations, and assists in stress relief. Oh, tea. this is our tea, cleansing tea, and it is made with. This is a new word to me, right here. Shisandra berries, burdock, yellow dock, lemongrass, dandelion leaf, red clover, and natural essences. All organic. Interesting. There's some things in there that I don't know about. Let's take a look and a sniff. Oh, it went up my nose. It was kind of strong up my nose at first. Oh, wow. It's kind of vinegary, vinegary smelling. We have pieces of fruit. Those are berries. Shisandra berries. I wonder what in here... Yeah, it definitely smells like vinegar. I'm a little scared about what that's going to taste like, but we shall see. And again, I get it everywhere. Whatever. <laughs> what else? Oh, man, I'm really nervous about that smell. I like sweet tasting fruity teas, so... We have rose, which is good for love, emotional healing, spiritual protection, harmony, attraction, promotes self-love, soothes wounded hearts, enhances love rituals, attracts positivity, anti-inflammatory, skin tonic, soothes skin irritations, supports emotional health, mood enhancer, beneficial for digestion. We have a huge amount of rose. And I already have a huge amount of rose, so I have enough rose to last me a lifetime. Oh, I think I see something blue. Oh, purple. It's lavender. My favorite. Now this I go through so much that I could get a pouch all the time and not have too much. <laughs> Soothes energy, spiritual protection, purification, enhances love and harmony, encourages inner peace, promotes restful sleep, aids meditation, attracts positive energies, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, relieves stress and anxiety, promotes relaxation, and improves skin health, aids digestion. Beautiful. I think that's all of our pouches, so I'm going to set these off to the side.
and we shall start opening things. Let's just start with our candle. And it's labeled Shaman. With obsidian and white sage. My shamanic, or the affirmation is, my shamanic journey brings clarity, strength, and transformation. Oh, wow, it's an obsidian arrowhead. Look at that. How beautiful. Add to the, our Arrowhead collection. We got one from Chipsy last month. Ooh, this smells great. Oh, I wonder what it's, the scent is. I'm not sure what the scent is, but it smells great. And, oh, do you guys hear that? What is it? Shamanic Journey Ritual Kit. Contents. Oh, wow. This is the tiniest print I've ever seen. I think it says egg rattle. Palo Santo stick. Shaman ritual oil, which is separate. And the spell sheet, which is separate. Oh no, oh, I totally just ripped the bag. I hate when I do that. <laughs> oh. Wow, this is some strong, okay, so I guess, I guess the bag is being ripped and I can always put it in a new bag. So here's our Palo Santo. Smells amazing, that's my favorite. And here's our egg rattle, painted blue, yellow, green, and red. Beautiful. And you know, that's what we're missing. I just jumped right in and this whole time I've been feeling like we I missed something and it was the incense. Ugh, that's what we needed. This is my special incense from, handmade incense from Mexico that Alicia brought back. Let's just do this real quick because it'll make me really happy to get this going. I've been hoarding it, so I only let it burn for like a minute or two. Uh, just because it's special, you know? <laughs> Oh, but I can really use some of it right now. Beautiful. I'm going to just set that right there. Let that get going. And we have another bag. Protection and grounding spell kit. Rainbow obsidian, tiger's eye, basil and rosemary, black, chime candle, salt jar, and spell sheet. Oh, I see. She has tape, too. That's why. That was my problem last time. Black chime candle. Our salt jar. A little red pouch. I know I remember um, reading the magazine in the beginning of the month that red is the color that plays a role a lot of the times. And here is our beautiful tiger's eye. Beautiful. 
and our rainbow obsidian. Let's see. Oh my gosh, do you guys see it? Let me stand up so I can see what you see. So if you look, there we go, right here is green and then there's a stripe of purple. I know it doesn't show very clearly on the camera. But you guys can kind of see it. Awesome. That's cool. And then this is our herbs, which is glued closed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that closed. Um, so that is that. Here's our oil, shaman oil. And this is probably the scent of the candle too. So it's an essential oil blend. Okay, myrrh, sandalwood, cedarwood, patchouli, lavender, and clear quartz. Oh, yep. Yeah. This is the scent of the candle. It smells great. I'm pretty sure it's the same. So we have our shaman oil. Ooh, this one's heavy. Oh, it's our crystals box. I'm gonna set that aside. It's not pink this time, I didn't know. Got a little jar here. Looks like salts. Shaman, handmade bath salts. Okay, sea salt, Epsom salt. Baking soda, lavender, jojoba oil, essential oils of myrrh, sandalwood, cedarwood, patchouli, lavender, and rainbow obsidian. Cool, we get another rainbow obsidian. I want to take it out and look at it. Mm, smells good. Packed full. Packed to the brim. Can't wait to use these. Oh, and this one, it's purple at the center. Oh, we got a little chip, but that's okay. I don't mind that. See if you can see the purple. The purple's right here at the tip, so. You can kind of see it. Awesome. Okay, I don't know what to grab next. Let's go with the next thing my hand touches is a sun catcher. Sunlight brings happiness to your life and rainbows enlighten your soul. That they do. Glass Sun Catcher Shaman. Oh, it's, it's taped on to there. Well, that's beautiful. This, this box really makes me think a lot of our box from Sacred Vibes last month for uh, Litha. For the summer solstice box. Um, the, everything we're getting here just goes right hand in hand. I feel like a lot really closely related to that. So I feel like a lot of these items 
work well together. Let's see. Ooh, we need to prop it up. We're just gonna prop it up with our salts. That way you can see it without the glare. Here is these things. Got our candle right there. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay, here's some incense. Cedar and sage. Oh shoot, I gotta put this incense out. Speaking of incense, I told you I'm hoarding it. I just let it burn for a couple minutes at a time. Just enough to get the scent in the room. Let's smell this one. Ooh, this smells really good. Let's light this one now. And we'll let this one burn now. Beautiful. Cedar and sage. Love it. Okay. Um, what is this? It's kind of like an egg carton. It's made in Canada. statue with beautiful teal highlights and it, this appears to be appetite to me crystals little crystal chips placed around and then teal painted feathers and the spirals made in Canada Wow, I've never had a, one of these type of uh, goddess statues, but this one's a beautiful one with the brown of the earth and the appetite crystal and the teal paint, metallic paint. I love it. Shaman goddess prayer. To mother earth, enfolding all beings with the beauty of compassion, nurturing, cre nurturing creativity and peace. Hear my prayer for the two-leggeds and the four-leggeds, for those who fly and crawl and swim and walk and run, for all children of the mother. May I live today from this center of wholeness and balance. Seneca Elder, Grandmother Twyla Nietzsche. And I'm sorry if I'm saying the name wrong. The name is right here at the bottom. Her beautiful name. Kiops International. And then this side is in French. And then here is the uh, website. Is that focused? There we go. If you want to check them out. We have another somewhat heavy item that looks like this. Uh, 
Oh, I think I cut it in the wrong spot. One second. Okay, don't break it, Misty. <laughs> Oh, I like the shape of these little glass bottles. I don't know, they make they almost make me think of little milk cartons or something, little milk bottles or something. I don't know why, but those are cute. I like that shape. I don't have any that are this shape. And here's number two. Square bottom, round top. And number three so we got three beautiful glass bottles oops let me move my incense because i just stuck it in the pen holder next to me even though i have an incense burner right over here and it's the ashes were about to go everywhere there we go We're down to, I think, the last two items. One second here. Besides the crystal box, I mean. Let's just make it. The box keeps trying to fall away from me while I'm trying to dig to make sure I got everything. <laughs> All right. It looks to me like our, these two items are both books, which I'm happy about. I've been loving reading all the books that I get in these boxes. Our first one is The Art of Sacred Smoke. What a beautiful book, too, by the way. Energy Balancing Rituals to Cleanse, Protect, and Empower by Nilu Malekpur. An essential guide to the frequency raising and energy rituals that will transform your life. At a time when many of us are looking for mindful solutions to the chaos of modern life, the art of sacred smoke offers an empowering new way to connect to nature and to your best self. Learn how to cleanse and protect yourself and your space. Tap into your intuition and elevate your frequency through sacred smoke, candle, and stone practices. Find support for all occasions, whether that's healing heartache, relieving anxiety, and dispelling bad dreams, cultivating focus, receiving support during travel, and prepping a space for meditation, or calling in love, blessing others, and connecting to your highest self. Oh man, it's been storming all day and the lights just flashed. I don't know if y'all saw that, but hopefully the power doesn't go out on us. The Art of Sacred Smoke offers rituals that are essential to aligning and calibrating your energy. Using natural, responsibly sourced ingredients from rose petals to Palo Santo and, help, and will help nourish a deeper relationship with yourself, the cosmos, and Mother Earth. Let's take a look inside. Ooh, so we have some colorful art. That's a smoke bundle right there beautiful book let's check out the table of contents ooh pretty Love that. For my grandmothers, my ancestors, and every teacher who has helped me become the woman I am today, I am filled with gratitude for your eternal guidance. I remain present, ever listening, with open, with open eyes, open ears, and an open heart. Well, that is beautiful. If we go far enough back in time, all of our ancestors understood our interconnectedness with the world. It was as basic as breathing. Our ancestors had relationships with other 
animals with trees and other plants with rocks, earth and waters and local spirits of the land that they honored. There was a sacred contract between them to never take more than they needed and to give back to the wider community in the form of offerings, prayers, and rituals. Our blood and bones remember this. And that's said by Jen Campus. Contents. What is the art of sacred smoke? The evil eye. The evil eye, or in Italian known as malacchio. A history of sacred smoke demystifying magic, up-leveling your frequency, embrace the jaduker within, I don't know what that is. Then, so we have jadu, the power of ritual, intuition and developing your senses, self-care is the crux of magical beings. Chapter three is magic of nature, Aligning with nature, grounding, embracing the energy of the seasons, harnessing the power of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. Chapter 4, Preparation, Best Practices, Opening Sacred Space, Spiritual Toolbox, and Setting Up Your Altar, Safety First. Chapter 5, Rituals for Support, Getting Unstuck, Dealing with Difficult People, The Ice Box, Ritual for Deep Rest, when you need a do-over, womb healing, and new year release. Chapter six, rituals for comfort. Sacred geometry for protection, everyday cleansing, blessing the new, blessing a new vehicle, calling home lost items, aligning with abundance, self-love mirror exercise, charshinba suri spring equinox, fire jumping ritual. Chapter seven, Rituals for Progress, Chakra Balancing and Alignment, Eye Shakti Ritual, Future Imagined Memory, FIM, Namaste, May You All Be Blessed Today, The Lovers to Align with Partnership, Sitting Within the Higher Self, Global Change Emanating, Peace and Compassion, and then we have Integration, A Note About Plant Allies and Gratitude. Let's pick a page and see what we see. Gratitude, perfect. Ah, before beginning this practice, give thanks to Helen Shuckman, the original author of A Course in Miracles, The Plant Medicine of Rose, The Element of Fire, and if you wish, to Marianne Williamson for inspiring this ritual. What ritual is it? Dealing with difficult people. That is something I need with my job. Ooh, love it. Let's check out the next book. Wow, another beautiful book. Journeying through the invisible. The craft of healing with and beyond sacred plants as told by a Peruvian medicine man, Hachumic with David L. Carroll. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we have a, um, book cover and this is what the book itself looks like and it has the embossed seal here it says 1817 Oops, over. a mysterious and powerful plant medicine with curative powers that is drunk as a tea during a sacred ceremony ayahuasca has been known to change people's lives dramatically but what once was a healing experience practiced only by indigenous South Americans and sought out by the adventurous few has in the past 50 years become increasingly popular around the world. Hachumik, sorry if I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name, 
A Peruvian medicine man has been practicing traditional healing arts in his country for more than 20 years. His unique approach is based on ritualistic simplicity and highlights the essence of the art, which includes the borrowed forces from nature. In this remarkable book, he shares his knowledge and experiences to broaden our understanding of this powerful medicine and protect it from misuse and exploitation. Whether you are among the initiated and curious or a seasoned journeyer, you will gain a deeper understanding of what shamanism is and how and why it works, as well as its possibilities and limitations. Hachumik reveals his own path to becoming a shaman and explains how a well-crafted ayahuasca ceremony unfolds when run by an experienced curandero. He describes in detail what to expect, both physically and psychologically, while under the guidance of the sacred plants. In addition, Pachumic introduces the concepts of soul consciousness and suffering consciousness, which are central to his message and key to understanding the deep healing work that he performs while also providing new insights for personal self-reflection. Self-consciousness keeps us stuck in our negative ways, but when soul consciousness is awakened during a ceremony or spiritual moment, our entire being awakens and we are shown the way to live according to the dictates of our conscience and the teachings of the spirits. With a Chumic uh, as our experienced and trusted guide, journeying through the invisible offers a new and healing way of seeing ourselves in the world around us. Hachumik is a Peruvian medicine man who lives between Lima, the North Coast, and the Amazon region. In addition to his healing practices, he is working to protect a section of the rainforest and doing research about growing a variety of sacred and medicinal plants. Hachumik is also involved in educational activities about the preservation of the traditional healing arts and the negative impact of incautious shamanic tourism. Wow. Let's take a flip through, see what the book looks like. So this is, you know, not a book with pictures. It's more about the information. Starting the shamanic journey principles of the shamanic journey, working with the sacred plants, reflections of humankind's past and future. Beautiful. I cannot wait to read both of these books. Amazing. And now we're down to our crystal box. Let's see what we got. Ooh, I just noticed the gold sparkle all over our goddess statue. Oh my goodness, so we have baggies of stones. Beautiful. So I'll open them when we find out what each one is and we'll look at them closer. This one definitely looks like Unikite. Okay. Ooh, we got something that looks like this. This is one of those, um, the name isn't coming to me right now, but we'll see it in a moment. All right, we're gonna set all of this aside. We'll open this one that's wrapped and then we'll go over the product information so we can see and look at them more closely. Oh, wow, it's another one of those points for the... I was wondering, the way we had all these bags of crystals, I was wondering, it looks like crystal gridding to me. And so this is the point for the middle of our crystal grid. 
How beautiful. Look at that beauty. It almost looks like Iolite to me. All right, let's look at our paper. All right, crystals box, flower of life crystal grid. Iolite top polish point, yay. I guess right, I wasn't sure when I first saw it. A couple, um, so we have our Iolite crystal point. That's pretty big. That's going to be fun to make the center of our grid. Um, okay. Wild boar. So this is a boar made out of dolomite. Oh, he's so cute. him. He's adorable. Spirit animals. The wild boar spirit brings mighty courage, fertility, and strength. Wild boars are solitary and do not need others to know what they have to do. The females are very protective of what is important to them. Your spirit wild boar can help you find the courage to face your fears and the wild energy to solve your problems. It acts as a protector of good intentions. Beautiful. Place him right there. All right, and then we have I believe this is, I don't know how to say it, M-O-Q-U-I, Moqui Marble, which is not what I thought this was, I'll tell you that. But all the others have multiples, so I think this is the marble. Oh, they mean marble because of the shape, not that it is a marble. That would make sense. So this is M-O-Q-U-I. So we'll see what that is. I think there's more information in a moment. Then we have six picture Jaspers, which I love. Let's take a look at them. Look at this one. I love this one. I've always wanted one of these ones that looks like a, you know, a landscape scene. And I got the, a couple times I've gotten them, but they were almost all solid one color. So I finally got one that looks like a scene. I love it. Oh, these are awesome. So yeah, this is what I usually ended up getting where it was always a solid color. Um, these are cool though. There's lots of markings. But this one is my favorite right here where it totally looks like a little landscape scene. How cool. Love that. Next we've got the Unikite. Beautiful pieces of Unikite that have both the green and the pinkish, reddish color. Beautiful specimens of Unikite. One of Stacy's favorites. 
Next we have, okay, this is Blue Aventurine. Looks like typical blue adventuring. Love it. And soda light. And then seven crystal BOS pages, which I'm super excited about. Because I especially want to learn about that one I don't know about. Wow, look at this one. It, this has green running through it. What is the green? I've seen soda light with the orangey red color. That's usually called sunset soda light. You can see it right here running through. But I've never seen soda light with, and you can really see right there how green it is with a patch of green running through it. Disco, if you're watching, let me know if you know. Um, what the green could be in the soda light. I'm gonna research that and see if I can figure it out. Beautiful specimens, love it. Then our apothecary box was the book, The Art of Sacred Smoke, the three four ounce jars, mugwort, lavender, white sage, cedar, rose, three charcoal discs, and a BOS page. The own box was the Shaman Goddess Statue, the Shaman Candle, the Cedar and Sage Handmade Incense Sticks, the 4 ounce uh, Shaman Bath Salts, Cleansing Tea, two Crystal BOS pages, Grimoire Magazine, Digital, oh yeah, um, and then the Witch Box was the Journeying Through the Invisible uh, book. The Shamanic Suncatcher, Shamanic Journey Spell Kit, Protection and Grounding Spell Kit, the rich Shaman Ritual Oil, and Instruction Sheets and BOS Pages. So let's look at those pages. Here is our gorgeous Crystal Grid. Oh, love it. That's beautiful. And do you see the ravens or crows? And the back is plain. It's really thick, nice cardstock. All right. Oh, this is instructions for creating your own loose incense. Obsidian. Rainbow Obsidian. Shamanic Journey Ritual. Protection and Grounding Spell Kit. Oop, another Rainbow Obsidian. Tiger Eye. I light picture Jasper Dolomite, which is what our boar was made out of. Here we go. I want to come back to that one. Unikite. Blue Aventurine, Soda Light, Crystal Grid for Shamanic Journeys and Spirit Animals. And let's read about our Moqui Marble, which I'm gonna have to Google how to say that properly. Chakra is the root chakra. I keep pulling everything down here. <laughs> There we go. The chakra is the root chakra, element earth, 
energy grounding and stabilizing. Numerology 4. Origin, Navajo Sandstone Formations of Utah and Arizona. Cool. Planet is Earth, Zodiac Sign, Taurus, and Capricorn. Maybe that's why I'm so drawn to it. The Moqui marbles are small round concretions of iron oxide, which is hematite or goethite, and sandstone. They range in color from dark brown to black and often have a smooth or slightly rough texture. Named after the Hopi word for dear departed ones, Moqui marbles have been used by Native American tribes in various spiritual and healing practices. They were believed to embody the spirits of ancestors and were used in rituals to connect with the spiritual realm. They are used in magical practices for grounding, protection, and balancing energies. They are believed to absorb negative energy, stabilize emotions, and enhance spiritual communication. These stones promote emotional stability, balance, male and female energies, and support physical healing. They help detoxify the body, improve mental clarity, and enhance overall well-being. They aid in shamanic journeying, past life exploration, and connecting with ancestral spirits. They support spiritual growth, meditation, and energy balancing. They are powerful tools for grounding, protection, and spiritual exploration, making them valuable additions to any crystal collection or spiritual practice. In witchcraft, they are employed for grounding spells, protection rituals, and energy balancing practices. In spirituality, they are used in meditation to connect with higher realms and ancestral wisdom and to balance yin and yang energies. In healing, they are known to aid in emotional healing, relieve physical pain, and enhance overall vitality. They should be handled with care to prevent loss of their energy. They do not require frequent cleansing, but can be energetically recharged by holding them during meditation or placing them on the earth. Oh, this is everything I need in my life right now. I love it so much. So, I never do this, but a favorite item, this. I have to say, I'm so excited about this. However, there's so many amazing items in this collection. I can't wait to get the next part of our information, our e-courses, because I would love to learn more about this. And, oh my gosh, don't break it. And, you know, if it was made traditionally or by, you know, natives from any re specific region did it come from. So I would like to know more about that. Or did she make them? Did Ronnie make these? I love the kits. This is a beautiful sun catcher. And I actually don't have a sun catcher. Um, so that's beautiful. I just have to figure out a place to put it. Um, this is a beautiful statue. I don't tend to resonate with these type of statues. However, I think this one's beautiful and I love the appetite chips on it. And of course, the crystal grid itself. I mean, crystals are just my all-time favorite. I've always been a crystal girl. So I'm super excited to get this grid. And this will be my absolute favorite of them. And then this is my little second favorite of the crystals. <laughs> And of course, look at our adorable little boar guy. Who can forget him? He's adorable. So, yeah. Tell me what you guys think down below. If you know what the green in this sodalite could be, I would love to know. And I hope you all have a magical night. Bye.